Welcome back. One set gone, one set remaining. Rival versus Retribution here up next. Both of these teams are fighting for a chance to go to the High Res Expo. You too can go as well. Get your tickets at HighResExpo.com. Going to see all of us here as well as uh, F. Dot and Peckies and maybe even me. But ready for the next round. Rival versus Retribution. I'm Tiger. That's F. Dot. How do you feel about this? Uh, I'm pretty excited about Rival versus Retribution. These have been uh, some of the more exciting guys. I see you full spell of my name out there, Peckies. We're going to have some words. It's F with a dot afterwards, but Rival Retribution. It's not F, comma? Not like that, like that, that jersey? All right, you and Lydia, we're going to have some conversation as well, but everybody, stop trying to see you bring it up again. It's just F with the dot. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, Rival Retribution, I'm excited. These were the top teams last time around. Cyclone might throw things off a little bit. They looked really strong, but uh, coming into this split, should expect the similarities from last time around. Just two very strong teams ready to go at it. Couple of roster shakeups too. Got a couple of new faces on Retribution as well as uh, a little bit of a team hop coming out from Rival. Watson. Watson gonna be on Rival. And that's scary. Just a little bit. But the rosters, uh, other than that, aren't really too crazy. I really wanna see, I mean, with Retribution, we're not really sure how the team is really going to, to cooperate and work together and really perform against Rival, who was essentially their biggest rival last split. Mm -hmm. Rival really only brought on another experienced SEO player. So I'm really curious to see how Retribution is going to step up. Yeah, I think if you just look at the paper, if you look at the game right away, you say, hey, Rival was already really good. And then they bring in Watson, one of the most talked about players on the European side of the console scene. I mean, I think you go, wow, Rival improved in Retribution? We'll see. But as we all know, it doesn't happen on paper. It happens in the game itself. Exactly. Picks and Band's going to be up here soon. With the, with, the, uh, with the knowledge that you have from the last split, what did these teams prefer and favor and prioritize? Sobek. Jokes aside. All, all the Sobek? Jokes aside, Rival loved their Sobek, whether it was on the solo lane or Zenborn on uh, the support. Rival absolutely loved the Sobek. End of that regard, just aggressive guardian play. Now with Watson on tow, I'm not sure if Sobek will still be as highly sought after for the purple squad, but Rival certainly looking to give Zenborn something aggressive, whether it's the Sobek, whether it's the Ymir, Fafnir band out here. Expect an aggressive dual lane coming out of Team Rival for sure. Arling Shin banned out as well. Coming out from Team Rival, Fafnir has hardly even seen a game. Al Kwong getting banned out as well. But it is a completely clean slate coming out for all of these teams as this is the first day of the EU SCO. So, I mean, any anything's aside, we're going to be seeing some new stuff. Yeah, for sure. Very uh, fresh, fresh slates. Team Rival trying to figure out what god they want to leave open more than what god they want yeah. to ban. Because at this point, if you're really thinking about that situation. Nemesis gets banned out by Team Rival. We'll see if Retribution stat picks the Guan Yu. Yep, yeah, uh, Guan Yu is open. Ravana is open. I mean, even Odin. I don't really see a lot of Odin on PC side, but he works really well when it comes to these Xbox team comps. I mean, Odin's just strong, even on even on the other platform. O Odin has a lot of strength when it comes to locking down healers specifically, and of course, completely changing what gods you want to draft. You're going to see more uh, Ulers and Onhers as opposed to you know hard to get gods that are harder to get out of the Odin cage if he's drafted. So he o the one selection of Odin will alter the way you change your draft in general. Somebody took notes. Freya going to be the first lock in for Retribution, but that does mean Raijin's still open. Sasano still open. I mean, heck, even Zeus. Everybody loves Zeus. He's still open. Raijin, Susano, Zeus, Wan Yu, like you were saying before. Just a lot of different options for Rival to really snap to. And that's what makes this game kind of scary at the moment. There's so much strength around the roster that bad phase number one doesn't exactly really root out anything that you want your opponent to keep away from. Yeah, but Freya worked really well in the previous set we saw between Cyclone GG and Excellence. But Raijin going to get locked in for Team Rival, fighting uh, fighting fire with fire. I like the Raijin pick. Raijin, Raijin works well against Freya specifically because, again, when you look at the Freya, the power, the trouble playing Freya is all is really trying to maximize your uptime of that steroid and dance when it's down. As soon as it pops up, ri expect Raijin to go into the quads and start to terrorize her so that she can't actually use uh, the abilities when she's crowd controlled. So certainly a good option from Team Rival going for the Raijin. Their second pick to pair with it, though, that's what we're really waiting for. Yeah, well, we're... Uh... I'm really curious to see. It is going to be the Guan Yu. We are going to have him in this fight once again. And now Odin's still available. If Retribution want to go ahead and call him out on that, it's completely open. 
I like I, I would like the Odin change with the change or, or I would like the Odin pickup with the change to Phantom. However, it does change the way Odin works That's a not little this patch bit. Yet. Exactly. So with the change to Phantom, it does change the way Odin works a little bit. So as we look towards the future, I think teams are sort of getting ready for it. All right, Odin, he's acceptable now, but maybe we shouldn't get used to picking him because it all changes on the very next patch with the Phantom change. Retribution are going to hang on to the current situation now, though, and go with the Odin. Exactly. Good pickup. Going to be able to negate that healing in the cage. Guan Yu not going to be able to heal out his teammates or help out when they are caught in its clutches. Retribution still has one more option available. They've got the Freya, the Odin, and the Susano. So that'll solidify Odin out of the jungle, sort of. Susano does have a little bit of flex, but really, true to the jungle, Odin really now uh, relegated to the solo lane or the support, depending on what style Retribution really want to work for. It's kind of like Freya. We saw her in the jungle a lot, and then when somebody played her over as, a, as an ADC, it really worked out. Susano, yeah. they tried to play him in the solo, but for the most part, he really excels when it comes to that jungle. And a rival going to fight Magical ADC with Magical ADC, picking up that Kronos, which, you know, I assume he's going in ADC. It makes a lot of sense for that to be the case. And I, I personally love Kronos. I think there's a lot of opportunity for Kronos. I, so I like Freya and Kronos, but for different reasons. Kronos has a little bit more just 100% uh, uptime in that even when his basic attack amplification isn't really running, he can still go to town with the slows, with the spells, a very powerful character, whereas Freya sort of has to bide her time, but when she's on, she's really on. So look for Retribution to be aggressive in these sort of bursts in the dual lane, whereas Kronos and Guan, if he's a support, will try to just keep things steadily going. Yeah, keep their pressure going. Team Rival going to put pressure on these mid lane picks. Zeus has been banned out and no Fenrir. I'm kind of nope, sad No, banned out. No ban Doggo. Banned out. No Doggo. No Brutalize. No Ragnarok. Not available, Retribution. Don't want to uh, see their opponent with that much setup it in the been, jungle. It would have been the it would have been the Norse Dream Team. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, Susano's not Norse, but Freya, Odin. Yeah, I mean, you would have had you would have had a whole bunch of Norse gods over there. Would have been the Norse Dream Team. That's oh, what well. I'm saying. Not the case. Not the case. Option over Team Rival. They've got their fourth pen. It'll be the Isis. So, want to deny Retribution with some of the early game is Freya very late, Susano mid, Odin pretty early though. So, if Odin, you know, don't just want to avoid that mid lane early game. A well placed Spirit Ball can be absolutely destructive. Oh, Not yeah. even just the damage wise, but just keeping you hold, stunning you out there for X amount of time, you're you're stuck. I think a well-piloted uh, well piloted Isis can just tear the, the opposition apart, whether it's out of the slow, whether it's out of the stun ball, or you get the silence. Uh, just Isis had a lot, has a lot of mechanics to really help herself and her squad. Now, Scylla is still available for the mid lane if they want to go ahead and pick her up, but last band coming out is Thor. Now, we see a lot of, uh, we see a lot of Thor, especially yesterday and mm -hmm. uh, earlier on, but not going to see him in this game. Yeah, Retribution paying heavy attention to Team Rivals Jungle. They don't want to give him too much, too many options. You see Alquang, Fenrir, Thor all banned away, so Rival have to dig deep into that god pool. Exactly, but waiting at this point, there's only... Uh, okay, so Mokong is going to go for the solo. Mango Man going to be... Or not Mango Man, sorry. Zinborn going to be... Gosh darn it, Watson going to be knocking that. Yeah, One of these days, I will get these players right. I'm still learning. Well, no, we just, for, to be fair, Watson, brand new on the squad, will be bringing his son Wukong to Team Rival, likely to see Zenborn play support on the Guan Yu, uh, which are two very, again, expect Rival to be aggressive in this dual lane. An aggressive Guan Yu certainly will work out for Team Rival. And then Watson making the rotations on the Sun Wukong. Really nothing out of the ordinary for Rival specifically here. Retribution want to finish them up. Where do you think they're going? I'm not actually sure. I mean, the pressure's there for Rival. Retribution, are we going to have to draft up something that's going to be able to, to, to answer answer that fire with fire? And speaking of fire, Vulcan, I didn't even, I didn't even intend that. And Heavy. Athena going to get locked in as well. So heavy damage coming out of the Vulcan in the mid lane. And then Athena will provide peel for Freya. A wheelish is a selection in the jungle for Team Rival. And this works out perfectly for them. Certainly a draft that looks very similar to what we might have saw Team Rival play earlier in the season uh, in the spring, uh, in the earlier split. So I'm really liking what I see out of Team Rival. Retribution on the other side. I always like what I see in Athena paired up with some heavy damage and it'll certainly help peel for Freya. Exactly. Now I like the Wukong a Wheelish mix up too because that, because the bull can be able to knock people up. Wheelish is going to be able to pull them back. 
A little I mean, bit here and there. A little bit, a little bit of wombo combo. I mean, when the with the solo ganks coming in from uh, ganks coming in from a wheelish, mm -hmm. gonna be pretty useful. Exactly, and you know when it comes down to a wheelish, gonna be able to do fine on his own. Uh, Raphael certainly no slouch there in the jungle, but Gnome able to help out just a little bit. Watson's going to be the mid laner this time around for Team Rival. So as we see a little bit of a roster shake up, ladies and gentlemen, Gnome is the solo laner for Team Rival. Rapio in the jungle with Watson playing mid lane. And then, of course, Zed Morton in the tournament doing the dual lane dance as always. But then Retribution switching up as well. A little bit of a roster switch up. Mango Man going to be on the Odin here for the solo lane. Man like Jaren going to be rocking the are going to be rocking the Freya. Get Fisher though, a new uh, a new addition coming in for the jungle. I mean, Minos going to be support, and Alexa going to be in the mid. So Alexa, so Get Fisher rather making his transition over from PC into the uh, console league. He's a, he's a player that has flirted with prof the professional scene uh, time and time again. He's done relatively well on the PC side of things, but never really found success anywhere or anything to really hang his hat on. Now shifting over to the to the console platform, hoping to find some success with guys like Alexum. I've seen him be a little bit more involved with the community, and that's certainly a first step. But how does his play wind up? That's what we're looking for here. One of the first times on the big stage in a long time, Get Fisher making his return to the jungle. I mean, he's gonna he's up against some pretty hard-hitting, uh, hard-hitting, uh, competition there. Rapio, definitely not anyone to sneeze at. Absolutely, and especially Rapio versus Watson. You know, Watson was ca Watson came into the league and everybody said, hey, watch out for Watson. He's going to be the one of the best players in the league. And a lot of times that conversation is followed up with, well, where is he? This time the conversation was followed up with, damn, you guys are right. He really is just that strong. And a lot of it came out of mechanics. Shifting over to the mid lane, those mechanics are just going to be even more so on display playing these big burst mages. And Watson has a little bit of an advantage when it comes to being on that ride, and he has a legit escape. He's going to be able to thunder crash away if things get too hairy while Alexum, all I can really do is backfire. Sure, but Alexum does have a lot of peel out of his jungler, Get Fisher. Going to help the Vulcan a significant amount. Lex, I'm gonna show his face. Get dashed out by the mid lane. Fisher in some trouble. Lo and the dares to dash away. Oof, lots of damage coming out. Barely getting by by the skin of his teeth. You know, Retribution really wanted to show up and take these camps as well, but instead going to lose it to Team Rival and force Susano back. Man. Uh, Watson over here on the Ryzen. Ryzen just always surprises me, right? With the, all of a sudden I'm here and all this damage is going out. I got, that's how Retribution has to be feeling too, just all of a sudden. And Rival going to keep that pressure up, invading into the back harpies, looking for the fight as well as the farm. Here comes Suku, going to try to jump in on Alexa, but a good Magma Bomb going to go ahead and r increase that distance. But the Thunder Crash coming in, Watson grabbing first blood for Rival. It's exactly how you said it. It's just a big surprise. Here's some damage. Beautiful play coming on Rapio right there. Pushing out onto Alexa was less about the play and more about the spacing. Poor ultimate set of Watson going to be off the mark there, but Rapio engages onto the Vulcan to just shove him and isolate Get Fisher so that it can be a two-on-one instead of a two-on-two, -two, dropping Get Fisher for first blood. Maybe it wasn't about the kills. Maybe it was about sending a message. Watson wants to go ahead and throw his weight around as much as he can, and he's definitely got the god to do it. Hey, new guy. Welcome to my league. Watson puts it down. Mango Man going to jump forward, get pulled by the jungler and slapped. Rapio gets another kill. That's going to be one for him next to the assist he got for first blood. Rapio bringing on the aggression. Team Rival in general bringing on the aggression. This is so much different than we saw the last set. It was a really passive game, but this has been boom, boom, boom with three minutes in, two kills. And something you've got to expect out of the Wheelish play, especially when combined with the Ryzen, you can make these early game plays. And Wheeler specifically will keep the tempo of the game up. Having the ability like Suku able to traverse the map quicker than other junglers it is, makes her able to really make these plays in the back harpies now on the solo lane and just keep the pace up and keep everybody guessing. Exactly. Good Moonlight Charge coming out, but Mango Man going to be just fine. A little too tanky for a Wheelish to be able to really lock down just yet. But the main prize was taking their own camp. Rival 
have been 0 to 100 since the beginning of this game. The last thing you want to do is give them any extra fodder. Yep, so Retribution just kind of defend what they can because we, I mean, we've already seen the invade on the back Harpies. Rival, not afraid to really get their hands dirty and go behind enemy lines whatsoever. Now, if you're Retribution, how do you really combat this? If you're not used to this, we're kind of seeing a little bit more similar game coming out from them, a nice, uh, nice just farm game. I mean, you can, so you can just sort of shake it off if you're Get Fisher and just go to the drawing board. Susano, certainly a character that can keep up with um, the um, the uh, wheelish character, whether or not he's going to follow or create his own path. You can certainly look towards Get Fisher to keep the pace up for Retribution, or you can look towards playmaking plays on the left side of the map with that dual lane. Either way, Retribution has to keep up with Team Rival. If this keeps Mango going this Man. direction... He's so low, forcing out the shield. He's oh, he's gonna be able Whap. to jump away. But Whap. here comes the cudgel gnome, getting another kill, zero to three. We're not even five minutes in. If retribution is not able to keep up with Team Rival's pace, thunder it's crash. Be here problems. comes the Tycho drums, three hits, four. Not gonna be able to find it. The Vulcan ult though, gonna take a lot of damage onto Watson. The typhoon coming in, but they're not letting them get away just yet. Minos trying to bring the pressure, trying to pull Rival and punish them, but there was no way. Again, the speed. I can say the same thing I said twice in a row. If Retribution doesn't keep up with Team Rival, it's going to be problematic as Rival makes another attempt to take somebody out in the mid lane. Every three seconds, Rival are just shooting shots out at Retribution, whether they hit or not. That's Rival understanding that they're driving this game, they're creating the tempo, and they have to keep that up because Retribution, they're just going to look up the entire game if something doesn't give. Watson not even afraid to go ahead and throw out those ultimates, even if he's not going to be able to confirm a kill. He's got the rest of his team there. They're so tight-knit. They're rotating well. So he's got that backup. Exactly. I mean, you got to go ahead and take those shots. You got to be able to just throw caution to the wind and make the plays. Team Rival got their first blood off of a hot play like that. They chased the enemy off without their the pre-first blood fight, right? Off of a hot play. Just surprise, we're here. And that's what Rival's going to continue doing. Just surprise, we're here. Now, this is dangerous. If Rival keeps up this momentum. Retribution haven't had an answer for it yet. We saw them try to bite back with Athena, but for the most part, it's not there yet. Man like Jaren going to get a good whoop, but I don't think he realized that Guan Yu was in the jungle. Good thing, because he's backing off. Exactly. Jaron understands that he just wants to fight this very casually and really bide his time until the boys show up, and that's going to be two players in the jungle immediately forcing out the ultimate from Guan Yu. It was really funny. I think we I think we wanted to see the fight at Guan, but as soon as he got hit by a little bit of damage from, from Get Fisher, he turned right around and realized it's not a fight he wanted to take. Yeah, Deuce is time to go, but good communication coming out to go ahead and just fully back off. No strag no worrying about getting picked off because there's only one there left. Just making sure you get out, knock up. Purification from Get Fisher. Very important there. Chased out by Rapio. Keep your eye on the Susano and see if Rival able to make a play onto him again. Exactly, because that's going to be down for another 150 seconds. They have quite a bit of time, a little over two minutes, to really take advantage of that. Did, <laughs> did Gnome steal that? Whap. Whap. That's the official sound of the Jingo Bang. Just whap. Because it's, it's always so, like insulting just over the top just like whap just just it's it's the it's the trick tank coming in with the wrath and running away but nobody's running away here alexum trying to find the damage with the ultimate not going to find it instead watson going to completely erase him from the map once again Play after play after play. Team Rival go ahead and they just invade onto the enemy's speed buff. And as soon as Retribution start to be able to talk about that, they get shot up in the mid lane as well. Keeping it on the dime is what Ret is what Rival is here for. Retribution, they've got this Freya. They've got they've got this Freya, and they want to sit here in the long lane and just take forever. Go in nice slow tempo. Team Rival say no and dial it up to 11. Zinborn showing up. Here comes the cavalry charge. Good slow coming out, but forcing the Freya. Oh, now, gonna have to turn and get some damage of their own. Get Fisher gonna be able to find the pull on the Zinborn. The heal's gonna be good. And now here comes Athena waiting to come on in. Zinborn still taking a lot of damage from Jaron. Good pull coming out from Minos, though. Important meditation saved to the last moment coming out from Zenborn right there. Uh, just the veteran play, understanding he didn't need to hit it immediately, waiting to see if he could get out of jail with just his heals. As soon as the third player joined the fray, drops the meditation, able to get out and wiggle out of problems himself. Well done. Some risky business, but it's paying off for Team Rival by the wayside. 22k and uh, about 2k up from their Retribution lane partners. And, I mean, Alexum, 
there's not, I mean, he's doing what he can. Beautiful Vulcan ultimate coming on, lots of damage, but he's only one person. He needs the exactly. rest of his team to follow up. Exactly. Get Fisher fell down a little bit earlier in the jungle, and that's kept him behind almost 800 gold the entirety of the game. That's going to hurt a little bit. Mango Man hasn't had the same, hasn't had the same impact that Gnome has been able to do either. Uh, it's just been issues all across the board for Retribution individually. Now, keep in mind, it is very early on in the game, and this team is sort of guided for a mid to late game engagement. So, once Alexa is able to pair up with the Freya player, Jura, on, expect a little bit more action out of Retribution. I mean, and we've already seen a lot of action out of Rival. We're still waiting on that Retribution action. Nine minutes in, zero to four. Hold on, lots of damage coming out from No Mango Man forced on the run. Not even going to have the Bird Bomb to try and turn it around. Instead, using that shield to just save himself. Chasing him down, just chasing him down, shoving Keep him out. Going. The Odin won't have the teleport available, so we'll have to hoof it back to lane. Doesn't even opt to go back to base. Alexum going to shade over. Watson making the rotation as well. Rival now here in four, responding to Retribution's four-man rotation squad. Rival are just running through the jungle like nobody's business, trying to find these picks. Mango Man trying to jump away. Here comes the here comes the cage, though. Fantastic zoning. Didn't even need to lock anybody in there. It kept everybody out. Here comes the Vulcan Ultimate. Going to find Rapio. Alexum getting credit for that kill. But now the pool coming out is inborn. There's so much damage coming out, but the heal's going to be good. Tycho drums on the wayside as well. Get Fisher crushes it in that engagement, fighting a four-man knockup, setting up his Vulcan for the big play, getting the kill, and chasing a couple of players out. You know, Vulcan gets one kill there, but it's the other player damage that he deals that really wins the team fight, shoving the enemy out. Rapio goes down, and again, all credit to Get Fisher. Three or four players knocked up in a single ability, allowing that Vulcan ultimate to come over the top and surge forward. 3,500 player damage now for the mid laner, who was previously almost uninitiated on the player damage chart. It's very big play for Retribution right there to keep themselves in the game. I'm still going Gaga over that cage. The zoning, making sure nobody can go there. And then that kind of pigeonholed them to have to go into that spot in the first place. Combo it with Git Fisher, the ultimate coming in from Vulcan. It was just a recipe for disaster for Rival. And Retribution finally find themselves on the board. And sometimes all you need is a little bit of momentum. Retribution, take that win. And like I said, it doesn't surge. It doesn't push Odin ahead. In fact, he's still 300 gold behind. But he's able to make the play onto the enemy, uh, enemy blue buffs. Take it away from Gnome. And now you see the Odin Mango Man with the blue buff, and Rival going to respond by popping up the Gold Fury. Yeah, I mean, Rival know how to make these plays. They're already looking at the Gold Fury. The heal's coming out, but here comes here comes Gnome zoning Get Fisher out of the way. Gold Fury is going to fall down. Vulcan Ultimate over, but not going to be able to knock anybody out. The Thunder Crash was going to be too good. Minos going to fall to Watson now, and the chase is on because Jeron's out of position. He'll be pushed out by the Kronos and everybody else from Team Rival grouping up. They've got the Gold Fury. That'll push them up ahead. Another 2,000 gold, but certainly not done just yet. Team Rivals still want to keep their foot on the gas. They've got this beautiful sort of mid-game team with the safety fail of the Kronos. If everything goes wrong, well, we still got atonement, so we can still do our thing. This is really where Rival is going to want to hit their stride, because Retribution are going to slowly come online right about now. Freya about to finish that third item. That was so devastating on the side of Cyclone in set one. We'll see if it has the same impact for Retribution uh, with the different story of Rival certainly speeding things up in the early game. Yeah, and they're really coming out with the aggression from 0 to 100, pedal to the metal, but they're going to have to adapt to Retribution finally coming online. They were able to have their way with them for the first couple of minutes, but yep. now, I mean, Retribution are going to be able to turn around and bite back. Exactly. Even even the first blood for Retribution, not the official first blood, but their own team, the first uh, kill they were able to find, that comes off of sort of Vulcan reaching that point. He's got a, he's got a different build than we mo usually see at a Vulcan, leaning on the side of cooldown reduction, but still a decent amount of power coming online for the Vulcan, and that will just continue in that direction. And especially once he hits level 12, Tiger, he'll have options for a second relic. He'll be a little bit safer, most likely, and we'll be able to see a different style of play come out from Retribution very soon. And Rival know this is happening. That's why they've been going through the jungle trying to take out as much experience, as much buffs as they can. Like we, like I saw them trying to go for the red buff. It's gone. It's been gone. Yep. I mean, it's basically here Rival trying to get a small lead so that the game is even once they're ahead, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You're sitting 2,000 gold ahead, and then the enemy... Uh, super carry, hyper carry comes online that'll sort of even things out hopefully uh, for team rival exactly a little a little deep currently maybe trying to uh 
Maybe trying to head off, but instead, Getfish are going to take off the uh, take the safe route on the other side. The fight isn't happening. Going to be a missed taunt. Gnome not going to be pulled out. Here comes Odin over the wall. Bit of a miscommunication. None of his team is there. Doesn't matter. He's just going to ring around and uh, spin around, rather. No ring just yet. Mango Man gets the Gun Gear's mind off. Slows a couple of players, but T Rival able to pick up the Harpies on the right hand side. I half expected Rival to go ahead and collapse in on that Same. Odin for that <laughs> option. I was getting really pumped up waiting for it, but I think that's a little respect coming out from Rival. They know Retribution are starting to hit that point. Exactly. That's the that's the alteration that Rival has made. I think if you see this, it's 14 minutes now. If you see that play at eight or nine minutes, Rival jump in, go ham, take out an Odin and start to look towards invading the jungle. Because you're now 14, 13 minutes in, they recognize that Odin, yeah, he's kind of irrelevant or, or close to it, but Alexum is going to hurt a little bit more, as will anybody else that rotates. So certainly opening their mind to the possibility and the potential of Retribution really starting to get things going and getting the wind in their sails a little bit as the game gets going. I mean, we kicked it off pretty fast in the beginning. It was, it was very quick. Now we're kind of starting to hit that farming phase. But unlike the other games, you know, it wasn't that in the beginning it's actually i mean I, i'm gonna disagree with you there i don't think, think it's a farming phase necessarily it's it, it's a waiting phase a lot of hurry up and wait the rival isn't waiting to get more farm online they're waiting for retribution to step out just a little bit maybe retribution think they're online now and want to take a gold fury well that's where rival's going to go ahead and fight rival's got the farm they've got a 14 a wheelish they've got a 14 uh mid mage as well as chronos really starting to hit his stride they're not really looking for more farm i think i think they're looking for retribution to sort of make their play and Rival will respond to it. We'll yeah, see. I guess they will just want to capitalize on the mistake that Retribution make if they overstep their boundaries, if they're not fully, you know, if they're not fully prepared for the aggression coming yeah. out from the boys in red. But here comes the boys in red as well. Zinborn coming in with the cavalry charge. Is that going to turn around? Odin's here, but it's going to get pulled back from Rapio. Now all the ultimates are coming in. Here's the cage. Going to be able to uh, help himself out a little bit. Good taunt coming out as well. Tycho drums raining through. So much damage, but not going to be able to knock anybody out. But Zimbor looking very low. It's going to get knocked out by Alexum. Nice backfire coming out of Alexum. And there is the Vulcan we all know and love. Able to deal damage enough to take out the support. Hanging on by a thread. Two kills in general for Retribution after, again, Retribution just able to deal more damage at this point. The numbers are a little bit more on their side despite still being down 2,000 gold. Their characters are hitting their stride now. Jaron doesn't make the rotation. He takes the red buff in anticipation of keeping map vision around on this left side because Gold Fury about to spawn and this time Retribution can fight into it. I mean, the early game could have been uh, could have been part of shock factor as well. Just seeing, you know, normally these games go a little bit before you really start to try and farm in those kills, but it was immediate. Rapio jumping in, Watson jumping in, and they're going to be big parts of these team fights, and I think that's why Retribution are really going to really start to try and focus in on them too. For sure. Uh, right about now is certainly the timing that you're looking for. I, I agree. And as the game gets later and later, like we said, it's only been one Gold Fury, but that's certainly not too egregious. We can see the, the plays on the right side really start to play uh, as Fire Giant becomes more and more of a reality. 16 is a little bit early, but in a couple of minutes, it's certainly going to be a big deal. You know what is a reality? Gold Fury down to 65%. Ultimate over the side. Here comes the Vulcan damage. Not going to be able to take it out. And Team Rival don't even care. They're not even slowing up their strike trying to find it, are going to be able to secure it for themselves, and now going to turn on to Get Fisher with the Tycho Drums, with the Cavalry Charge, looking to find it. The four shots are going to be able to take a lot of damage onto Jaron, but it's not going to be enough. Bird Bomb from Mango Man, trying to get the damage onto Zenborn, but that's going to be a complete and total disengage. Nobody needs to get a kill as long as the objective is down, and for Retribution, unfortunate situation for them, as they wind up looking up again Ooh. at Team Rival. Now Mango Man jumping in, getting pulled, but Alexum takes out Watson before the Tycho drums can do the damage. There it is. Now Gnome going to be able to take out Mango Man back in the mid fight, jumping in a little too late. Now Alexum is going to be able to join back in after that clone is gone. Get Fisher teleporting forward, going to be able to pull Zimborn, but a dash going to get him out of the danger. Love the player to get Fisher again, pulling the player into the damage out of the Athena ultimate. Smart play coming out of the veteran PC transplant. And now, looking at Retribution, unfortunately, man, I got to be looking at Minos, Tiger. He just, he's the one that has the wrath. I actually mean wrath this time. There, there he, is a wrath. I see it. And he can There's go no down, numbers over it. He could go down and change the way that this game goes by simply getting in there. He's minimally 
minimally zoned out by rival, if at all, just can't make it back in time and able to really become a part of the conversation. If you're the support with Wrath there, you absolutely have to make that, especially in a team fight, especially in a, in a situation where nobody dies. The support is allowed to die. Just go in and try to make it happen. If you're not even thinking about it, don't even buy the Wrath. Exactly. I mean, you, you have to be that. You have to be in the fight. You have to be aggressive in order to, to take it. If you're not doing it yourselves, you have to jump in. And we're yeah. not really seeing that initiative coming out just yet. And to be fair, it's been two gold furies. Rival only find themselves up about tw uh, 3,000 gold. Yeah. So it's not too terrible of a situation. But when it starts to come down to these heavier gold furies, when the fire giant starts to be contested, I need to see Minos in the neck of these team fights. I need to see Minos just covered in enemy combatants because he's trying to get these objectives. No, I'm caught in the cage. Is gonna not going to be able to bull out just yet because it's still here. Birdbomb taking quite a bit of damage, but no, maybe able to slow down slow down him enough to get out and that's one of the problems as odin gets older and older older just more levels i don't know if you call characters older or younger that's an interesting one he's the all father he's pretty old but either way he as he continues to grow in strength he's gonna eventually become a one-trick pony unless he can keep himself relevant and retribution really need to have odin up in the front line slowing out those cages the slow the use of the slow was really impressive otherwise he would have died exactly and you, you know right there you see mango man he's able to get the damage off but you know gnome has nothing to worry about he doesn't even have to think about the ultimate because all right you're, that's your damage. Hooray. It's been used. I know it. It's over. It's not 10 minutes. It's 19 minutes. I'm not as afraid of you, Odin. And so Noam just literally walks away. Gosh, we're 19 minutes in and we still only have nine kills. It felt like we we're going to have so much momentum coming out. And Rival still sitting pretty good. Still making the good calls, especially keeping Retribution off of these mid harpies. But I mean, I felt like we've seen so much more. I mean, we've seen a lot of aggression and, and a lot of these fights wind up with just one player down or, or in the case of the last team fight. Everybody's still alive. Rival want to change that by making this big one happen. Down comes the initiator on Guan Yu and Team Rival bringing it to Red. Zimborn charging in. The Vulcan Ultimate gonna whiff. Not gonna be able to lock down anybody and Team Rival feeling nice and pretty. Rapio taking out Get Fisher and the rest of the team taking out the tower. But here he comes from behind. Mango Man with the, with the bird bomb. Catching three in the cage. And then the back line, Alexa taking a lot of damage. Gnome gonna be able to take him out. Big play coming out of the Odin, separating three players from the rest of Team Rival, but at the end of the day, two players is all they need to bring it down. Atonement taking Jaron down as well. Tier 1 tower toppled. The Tier 2 saved again specifically by Mango Man. Had there not been an Odin ultimate, this Tier 2 tower would have been dead a while ago. Now, it just stutter steps Team Rival because of the kills they were able to make on the front side as well. So Team Rival pushed down the entirety of the mid lane sands. The Phoenixes net themselves another 2k gold and send themselves into the enemy jungle sitting 5k the wiser go ahead and starve them out 21 minutes in three to nine rival six kills up and six thousand experience five thousand gold they're really going to start going through this jungle going through everything especially these towers that tier one is also gone from the solo side tick tock tick tock tempest fugit what did we say in the beginning of the game keep up the tempo rivals start that very early on by just going with the team fights now once they wait throughout that mid game now they're ready to go ahead and fight towards the objectives rapio try to make it happen by himself pull out a get picture and it's an ultimate for a, for a Purifi Relic. Yeah, purification is. is gone. And now, I mean, that's that's still a good thing. Susano not going to be able to help himself for another 48 seconds with those purifications. And he's going to be a nice target. I want to see them really kind of zone in like they did earlier. Yeah, he's going to get Fisher going to have to play a little bit more safe here. And honestly, get Fish has been one of the shining lights for retribution. Uh, he's been able to actually sort of make it happen here. A lot of players, I think retribution had a really strong mid game and a late game, right? And their mid game was just n n mitigated by rival by just avoiding it, right? Yeah, yeah. Early it, game it wasn't was even all there. rival. Yeah. It wasn't there. Early game was all rival, and then mid game, oh. well, nothing happened. Oh, Mango Man. Man gonna find himself on the receiving end of five members of Team Rival. The ultimates are coming out. Mango Man not gonna be locked down. Instead, Rival gonna stay here with the wacky, wavy, inflatable arm tube man. So now, a lot of times you say the ultimate trade out for the purification, a good play. And I agree, Rapio in, in an unfortunate situation there, the pull would have been much better used on the Odin there. Red's gonna start at the Gold Fury, but hey, 
Hey, guess what Rival's doing? Rival's doing, Rival's attempting to do the Fire Giant, and Alexum wanted to go ahead and dish out some damage, maybe maybe even find that six deal, but instead he finds himself dead. He's another statistic. Yeah, launches out the ultimate, not going to find a target, unfortunately. Retribution on the left side, relinquishing Fire Giant. They are aware of it, and it's just not going to be in their schedule today defending against this Fire Giant. I mean, they already put a lot of resources into taking out the Gold Fury. That's a good step for them, but the Fire Giant is going to fall to rival. I feel like they just kind of, I mean, they made a good call, but I feel like if they had switched objectives, maybe they maybe they would have been able to take it if they could take uh, Rival in a team fight. I don't know. I like that call, Tiger. I think that Rival are ahead by a lot, especially looking at the characters they've chosen. Uh, Freya not really able to make it happen. You see Rapio just on the aggression here. Uh, Rival go for the Fire Giant. Rhett, I don't think they have a shot in hell sealing that Fire Giant outside of a Lucky Vulcan Ultimate or Minos. So go for the other one that you can take. I like the play. I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, they're going to be able to help help slow the bleed coming out when it comes to the gold. And uh, I mean, Ret Retribution still on the run. Rival putting on the pressure. Tier 2 tower is now gone and Guan Yu going to be able to heal themselves up. That sustain coming out is a huge part. I mean, Guan is just in general always going to be a part of the conversation. Great backfire from Alexa to narrowly avoid the slow stun out of the Kronos. Well done. Good pestilence coming out. Item changes two coming out for against the Guan Yu, who's being a really big nuisance, as well as Gnome forcing himself up into the open to the Somersault Cloud. Going to crash on down. Lots of damage coming out, but Alexum forced to use that Sanctuary instead. Bird Bomb. Gnome taking a lot of damage, and Mango Man going to be able to find him, but here comes the Tycho Drums. And there's the damage out of Atonement still coming on clean. Low on the player damage, but high in the t damage of this individual fight. Rapio bringing it home, taking out Mango Man. Alexum doing everything he damn well can, but still not a one-man show. Can't defend the Phoenix. Rival here, four men deep, able to look directly towards the Firebird. Only one protecting it is going to be Minos. Finds a great taunt, but again, no follow-up for the team retribution. And he's body blocking some of these shots, trying to help out with the Phoenix under crash. It's going to get Watson out of the fires for now, but... But he did that, that taunt, that taunt in the body blocks, that was it. Minos, a fantastic job. You know, he's fighting a couple of body blocks here and there. Actually winds up getting the kill onto Zenborn, getting him, catching him, tanging that tower a little bit too long. And honestly, Retribution, they looked... Uh, it didn't look clean. It wasn't. It wasn't flashy. It won't make a highlight reel. But Retribution defend the right side, Phoenix. They do exactly the job that they needed to do. That's all you need to ask for out of a Smite team. Well done. It ain't shiny. It ain't clean. But it worked. Exactly. That's the entire point. Is that it worked? Whatever you can. Whatever you can just scrape up, scratch up from the scraps. If it works. I mean, don't fix it. Yeah, I mean, we saw Vulcan came in and just sort of tossed a meatball and backfired. And, well, I can't do this myself. And then you see another player come in. Get Fisher sort of gets chased out after a nice pull. And then Minos comes in and, well, I'm going to body block a little bit here. I'm going to find a taunt. I'm an Athena, though. What else can I do? All of a sudden, you start to actually look. The Phoenix took a couple of hits. They have a Kronos. Atonement's supposed to be able to annihilate that. Instead, Retribution just stick together some good old-fashioned elbow grease, spit shine, and put together a nice defensive set. Positioning coming out from Retribution. Want to go ahead and focus in on this Tier 2 tower. They can't defend the first one. They don't have to worry about fire minions yet, so they can go ahead and try and put all their attentions to this defense. And that's what Retribution is going to try again here at the Tier 2 Tower this time instead. Rival want to find the initiation. If Rival can start this team fight, they can end it. Instead, Mango Man jumping on the back, catching four players in the ring, and Alexum off the mark. There it goes, though. Tycho Drums not able to find Man Like Jaren because of the ultimate. Good knockup coming out from coming out from the Alexum. But Gnome going to be able to find the whiff onto Jaren. Alexum in the background. They're not even worrying about the tower at this point, trying to take him out. Mino so low. Zinborn going to find the kill. Two players still stuck at the backside. Odin being chased, still being aggressed on. Rapio trying to find the flip. Won't. The Phoenix is still immune. Focus on the tower, team rival. Atonement finally takes it down, and rival can actually attack the Phoenix, but they're a little bit too low. Have to lean on to the Guan Yu.
They're a little bit low. Get Frisher's there. Mango Man is there, who was on point with that cage. But here comes the Thunder Crash. Get Fisher, as I say that, taking a lot of damage. Purification forced out of Alexum, plus the Sanctuary. He's going to have no relics. It doesn't matter. Rapio taking him out. Gnome going to be able to take out Get Fisher here in the cage, wow. though. Gnome having a hard time. So close and so low. Is going to be able to bowl away. Beautiful knockup and help from the jungler. Rapio. Gnome is able to find an exit. Mango Man jumps over. Can't find the kill and the back out of Sun Wukong a little scary but will be fine. Jiran oh. makes the rotation out of the fountain takes out two team rivals stayed far too long there Tiger and got bit in the butt because of it. The splash is real. Atomit doing his best to stay quick and stay away from Mango Man and Minos gonna be just fine right now as long as it keeps up the pace but Mango Man chasing hard instead gonna focus on these focus on these creep but Retribution bit back another bite in the Gold Fury. Exactly. Exactly. Rival stayed far too long there. Get what you came for and be out. Instead, they got what they came for and tried to farm some kills, try to stretch it to another Phoenix. Not in the cards. Now Retribution able to find two kills thanks to the Freya and looking for the Gold Fury here. But they got to be careful. Team Rival do have two players that can certainly make oh, it happen. Oh, the zoning, absolutely beautiful. Nobody even going to be able to come close. Gnome wanted it, but not going to be able to find it. That cage took exactly where it needed to. Not going to be able to get anywhere nearby for the steal. Hey, Wrath was used. Good job. Hey, yeah, that too. Yeah, there was a Wrath. Minos able to uh, confirm his own Gold Fury with his Relic right there. Good job. And Retribution making the shot that they absolutely need to. Pick up that Gold Fury after the defensive set. Certainly a good breath of fresh air for Retribution. Team Rob, we're going to start with the, gold, the Fire Giant here, though. Yep, Fire Giant has been started, and uh, they're going to continue going, trying to zone out Retribution. They probably should have started it a little earlier, considering they were doing the Gold Fury. Could have had another split like that again, but the Feather Step doing nice damage. Play. But Jaren taking out Rapio. That is the entrance they needed to try and take this Fire Giant. And again, Mango Man trying to start things on the backside. Minos here. Ultimate out of Alexa. I'm a little bit premature, but not going to be the end of the situation here. Nice Retribution ring coming out for Mango Man. Yeah, Mango Man going to trap two in that ring. Keep Rival away from the objective. Now Retribution are crawling around there. It's trying to set up their wards, set up their positioning. Heck, maybe even take it here in a little bit. Exactly. This is where Retribution are back into the game. Team Rival, now they didn't miss their window by any stretch of the imagination. Rival are still in this game. Yeah. But they missed the largest window for the win here. Oh, like get said. Fisher. Taking a lot of damage. The Thunder Crash over was almost going to be able to take him out. Early game clearly belongs to Team Rival. They're able to make a couple of plays off of the Rapio oh, Watson no. combination, and they're able to make it happen in, in the early game. Mid game belongs to Retribution, so Rival just sort of walk away. Late game, however, it's anybody's game. Retribution are back into it with characters like Vulcan and the Freya. Can certainly bring the fight to Rival, and that's what they're looking to do right now. Yeah, but Rival went as soon as Retribution backed off, trying to go ahead and take out. Here come the Tycho drums, three hits and four. Man, am I know so incredibly low, but it's going to be fine, even though Raiju's on him. The Cudgel going to be just off the mark. Now, Jaron cut between three people. Minos is going to be just fine, but Zimborn going to get credit for the Freya. Freya kill is important, to say the least, for Team Rival here. Certainly want to keep that carry down for the moment. She's one of the big parts. Uh, the, uh, uh, of, she's one of the big reasons that allow Retribution to fight into this one. Mango Man by himself trying to get out of the cage. Four players, and he's just going to be greeted by the Sun Wukong. But a nice support knockup from Alexa saves the day. Minos coming in as well, trying to help out. Good taunt coming in, but it's not going to be enough. But it's going to be okay because Mango Man's still alive. They're fighting the clone, but back in the line, Rival are heading right back to back, and then probably this Fire Giant once again. After these extended engagements, we've seen Team Rival expend their HP bars pretty much too much. They gotta head back to base and, like you said, reheal and just get ready for the next team fight. Freya's gonna be back as well, so buy a couple items, maybe a couple of potions, and we'll see how the next engagement goes. Like I said earlier, Rival were winning the other ones because of their hot tempo, right? Mid-game, they realized Retribution could dance a little bit with the Odin really being at prime power, so Rival took their foot off the gas. Now, however, it's even. And both teams really have a stake in this one. Vulcan and Freya can combine just as hard as Kronos and anybody else. So really, Retribution and Team Rival. Rival have the lead. They're up 5k gold, but this is a lead you can absolutely fight into, and you have to if you're Retribution. 
Third time's the charm. Arrival trying to DPS down the fire giant. Lots of damage, but it's not going to be enough. Jaron trying to find the kill with the ultimate atonement. Using the rewind, and here come the Tycho drums. Lots of damage. Here comes a thunder crash. Alexum going to get eradicated now in the back line. Jaron in a really That's bad it. spot. Gnome going to find it. The big DPS is gone. And those are the key targets for Team Rival. They knew exactly who they had to focus mm. down, and they go for it. You can even see the tertiary target get Fisher down almost as low as Mango Man, who's low just because he's one of the deeper players in the game. Fire Giant now, 50%. This one's going to go. A lot of people say free here. It's already been paid for. Rival pay for it in, in tow with Duran and Alexa. Lots of payment there. The push and the pull from this game is definitely going to be evident in the graphs. 32 minutes and 52 seconds in, 8 to 19. We see a little bit of a dip where Retribution were starting to come online, but now it's all team arrival again as they barrel down to go ahead and take out the first Phoenix. Right one's going to fall down. The rotation coming on. Minos Can can't really again? do anything. A good, a good three man taunt going to come out, but Mango Man is here, but the Phoenix is so low. Atonement going to be able to find Get Fisher, and that's not good for Retribution. This is the point in the game where Kronos just sort of activates his abilities and goes to the Phoenix. And if somebody's in the way, sorry buddy didn't see you there, accidentally got a kill. Sorry buddy didn't see you there, accidentally got a kill. By the way, all three Phoenixes are down. Kronos doing it. Atonement looking fresh. Three, zero, and eight. Rival haven't even been punished for all three of these Phoenixes. They're still looking nice and happy. Even their HP isn't that low. It's a good turnaround fight. Yeah, Retribution jumping in. Mango Man trying to find the Bird Bomb, but it's not going to be able to lock anybody down. Instead, Guan Yu's going to be able to heal him up, and they're waiting alongside this corner. Uh, Thunder Crash coming in. Man like Jaron using the ultimate as well. It's going to be able to find Watson, the ultimate for the ultimate, but one's going to get a kill. But Atonement is going to be able to get that revenge hit. Hot play out of Atonement, finding the small dial, able to knock the players up. Retribution with a great swift comeback, but might not be enough. Team Rival now barreling on the left-hand oh, side. The Minos in trouble, Odin in trouble. Rapio puts down Alexum. Two players still trying to defend, and Team Rival on the defense will return back to the lanes. They cannot break the throne room just yet. Mango Man really trying to find Gnome. He's a nice, tasty target, but at this point, he hasn't been able to lock him down for the past three feet. Phoenix assaults, but he is going to find atonement this time. May not be known, but it's a good start. Just another big old jump coming out of Odin, still being relevant in this game as far as his damage is concerned. Able to make it happen, at least when it absolutely counts. Retribution with three Phoenixes down. Chase rival out of their base. 12 kill deficit coming out. Team rival sitting nice and happy currently. I mean, what? With Retribution, their hands are going to be tied with all these fire minions. How are they going to be able to amass that defense needed? Well, that's what they're doing right now. So Retribution make the fantastic counterplay, which that's how you have to play it against Team Rival right now with the Fire Giant and a little bit of a lead, although that lead will pretty much already be irrelevant thanks to our items being finished. Retribution has to bring the fight to Rival. They have to be the first one to initiate, like we said 10 minutes ago. That's why that fight on the left-hand side absolutely worked out. Now that they've done their class work, they have to do their homework and do the monotonous grind of pushing up the, the waves in all the lanes. That's why you see the spread out from Retribution and everybody just killing minions. Push these fire minions as far up as you can without getting picked so that when Rival come and fight, they've got to wait for their own minions, and it's one lane at a time. A popular opinion would be to go ahead and take that Gold Fury since Retribution have their hands tied. Jer uh, Mango Man trying to jump away, but the Feather Staff going to be Ooh. good. Rapio is going to be able to take down one of the heaviest hitters and then force out his Sanctuary himself. The jump is going to be good, but Jaron going to be able to find the kill with the ultimate. Freya still killing it. Watch it through oh. the wall. Finds two. And Team Rival now looking at the Titan. Titan is going to be the uh, biggest contention here. Lots of damage being pumped out. Retribution can try, but the Titan continues to fall 20% to three to zero. Solid performance coming out from Team Rival. They're going to get at least one point on the board now against their against against Retribution. You know, Retribution played some fantastic smite right there, and it's one of those games where it's all in the De playing defense in smite is a lot harder, I think, than playing offense. When oh, definitely. You're, when you're 7k ahead with a fire giant, ain't nobody really causing you an issue. But when you're able to look up at that lead and say, all right, 7,000 with a fire giant, no problem. 
Odin, go jump in there, bro. We'll follow you up. That <laughs> we becomes, got you. We that, got you. That becomes a little bit more problematic. So having that underneath retribution, they don't wind up with the win, but certainly impressed me a little bit with the changes to their roster. Still able to make it happen. But it's really nice to see Rival really step up. They were under retribution when it came to the standings. So really, uh, really showing up for this match. Yeah, we saw Get Fisher step in for Proxy QQ, formerly on this team, and Get Fisher making it happen. Honestly, a few key moments for Retribution really brought to you on part of the new jungler and able to combine there um, with Alexum, who honestly, Alexum didn't have his greatest game. Alexum, I think, usually plays a little bit better than we saw here today. However, going up against Watson in his debut in the mid lane, a lot of fun to see Watson make that rotation. Certainly had a huge impact. Those shots through the walls. Watson, a big deal on that Ryzen. Definitely. Well, that was.